Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to episode 236 of the Spearhead Sundays podcast, the best and most consistent podcast in the country. And that's an objective fact. I'm your host, Lewis Spears, and uh, I forgot that I was filming anything today, so that's why I'm dressed like I'm going to stab you at a train station, which I will by the end of this episode. Uh, prepare to die. Um, but welcome to the show, guys. I, I think it's going to be it's going to be a, 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 an episode. I did want your feedback uh, based on. Uh, last episode, I do have uh, unfortunately Keelan here, uh, and uh, he's going to be helping out with producing the podcast, and he's also going to be a, a bit of a laugh track. Um, he has been told that if he doesn't laugh at all of the jokes, he will be executed. So I'm doing that. But if you if you if you find it annoying, do let me know uh, because we've never done it before on the Speared Sunday Show, and uh, where I'm looking at potentially maybe giving Keelan a microphone, not to talk to me all the time just to add in things and fact check me as we go through articles and stuff like that so do let me know your, your feedback because I know this is a very solo podcast uh, what do you think about adding in a, just a little bit of uh, professionalism into the show not too much because it is the podcast but also you know I have been on on a bit of a missing episode streak for probably about the inception of the show I think we could say so maybe adding in some type of help could improve the consistency of the show you know we might take a hit in quality but the consistency will go up and uh, that's what it's all about guys you know um so mr beast has been cancelled mr beast is over and i for one am all for it for too long we've watched jimmy uh give homeless people money and and give his friends cars and give away uh, houses to people in need and start charities and plant 20 million trees, you know? Oh, you put, you planted 20 million trees? Cool, bro. You know what has a, a, a bigger impact on, on the world than planting 20 million trees? Calling your editor a retard. That is what he's getting cancelled for. And can I just say, as a person who employs five, six editors, if you can't call your editor a retard, what's the point in hiring an editor? Why would you have one? That's the whole point. I don't like. I'm. I'm. Yeah. Cool. I'm making more content and I'm putting out a podcast. But the main reason I have Keelan here is so I have someone to bully who can't complain because I'm their boss. That's the only point in having an employee. No, Mr. Beast has been cancelled, and uh, it, it's it's for for a number of reasons. I've got the New York Times article up here, um, which is is just really really great. Uh, pull up the pull up the article, the part of the article where the where the editor complains about him. I want to. I want to see how, how my behavior with Keelan stacks up. So this is what happens to every fucking YouTuber whenever they let somebody go is the, the, ed, the editor or the former employee or the team member or the housemate will make a 40-minute expose video that'll get 6 million views. It'll negatively affect the creator's life for about 6 minutes and then the person who made that video's channel will just slowly trickle down to zero views and they'll work at Subway. So, you know, if you, if you keep making those spelling mistakes, Keelan, and that could be in your future. <laughs> um, so, Matt Turner, 20, an editor for Mr. Donaldson from February 2018 to September 2019, said that Mr. Donaldson had berated him almost every day. Mr. Donaldson often called him by a phrase used to insult people with mental disabilities, Mr. Turner said, leaving him in tears. What? When you're not allowed to do that to your editor? You're not allowed to call your editor a retard until he cries? This is ridiculous. No, that doesn't make... Look, that doesn't... Oh, in all seriousness, that doesn't make Mr. Beast look too good. But also, how old would he have been then? 18. He would have been 18. I mean, fuck. You, you're lucky that you worked for me in my 20s, Keelan. If you worked for me when I was 18, you 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 probably wouldn't have any self-esteem less left, you know? I, look, you have to be nice to the people who are part of the team. But also, how do we know that this dude is telling the truth? Like, like this is 
I feel like a really big part of working for American YouTube, it doesn't really happen in Australia because it's not really in our culture, but a big part of working for American YouTubers is is also plotting your their downfall as part of your exit plan because with the, the, the job market in in, uh, in America and like job security and benefits, you don't get any benefits, you know what I mean? Like in Australia, if, if a business lets you go, often you'll get at least a month of notice you'll get a nice severance package, Uh, maybe you'll get paid out and then you'll get sick leave, annual leave, all of that money could be, for some people, depending on how much sick leave and how much they've worked there, could be upwards of $10,000 to just see them on their way uh, and while they find a new job and they're okay. Uh, In in America, there is no severance package, so you kind of have to make your own package and part of that is getting 600,000 views. You know, what is that, $2,000? That's a a month of rent you know so sometimes if you lose your job the best way to make rent for the next month is call your boss a rapist you know what i mean like sometimes that shit works you look at jeff Wittick, you know look at that man look how much money he's making out of no longer being david dobrik's friend and yes okay david dobrik may have allegedly attached the man to a crane and then rammed him into the crane shattering his face but that's all conjecture how do we know that the doctors aren't lying how do we know the x-rays aren't photoshopped how do we know that the eyeball hanging out of jeff's face wasn't cgi we don't know these things We do. David Dobrik almost definitely did it. But look, I think that Mr. Beast is allowed to be a little bit of a douche once when he was 18 to a guy who worked for him, maybe. Because the editor also... uh, and we all know that I have that I have. Uh, I'm incredibly biased against editors in all their forms, including my own, especially. Uh, <laughs> but the guy that left Mr. Beast, Keelan was telling me that he made after he left a video about how great Mr. Beast was. That went amazing. And then his channel started to die again. And he's like, well, that went great for my channel. Why don't I do the opposite? Made a whole expose about how, how he's not amazing. Okay, Mr. Beast paid his rent for two months. Now, either, right, either, there's two interpretations of that. Either Mr. Beast is a great guy and he's very generous and maybe the guy's rent wasn't that cheap, so he paid his rent until he could find another job. Or there's about 48 hours of audio recordings of Mr. Beast lording over this editor man going, you fucking retard, I told you not to spell it like that. And that's why he was paying the rent. And maybe that's going to come out in the New York Times next. That could be what happens next, you know. But this this article is a is a great little read. A lot of people are saying that it's uh, that it's some journalist trying to cancel Mr. Beast. I don't really read it like that. It to me, honestly, it seems kind of balanced. Uh, it mentions a bunch of amazing things that Mr. Beast has done. It mentions the the planting the trees fucking thing and then it mentions a few bad things that people have said that he's done and also some bad things that the man has done uh last month mr donaldson also faced backlash from fans who lost significant amounts of money on a cryptocurrency scheme he had promoted and invested in and again might i just say once more if you can't scam thousands of fans out of millions of dollars with a cryptocurrency pyramid scheme what's the point of having a youtube channel That's the only reason I do this show, so that I can get all of you to buy my NFT, which, by the way, is still available. I sold 12 copies and no one's looked at it since. Where's my millions? I'm looking at Lush Sucks making fucking $2 million out of his fucking NFTs of Patrick Bateman and some hentai girl painted on a wall in VR. The dude isn't even selling pictures of real art. He's selling pictures of digital art. And it's a fucking token. It couldn't get any more fake. And I'm very proud of Lush. And he is a friend of mine and good on him. But I will yell about it. And what is the point of having a fan base if you can't scam them out of millions of dollars? Look at Jake Paul. You can invest in the Jake Paul fucking token, whatever that thing is. There's some weird, like, 
create a coin economy thing that uh, it's not like a Bitcoin or an Ethereum where you can actually use it. Because I am a believer in cryptocurrency, but at being someone who understands cryptocurrency, I also understand that 95% of it is a scam. 95% of it is a fucking scam. And I say that as a man who potentially, if he didn't sell his Dogecoin, would have a hundred grand in the bank, but he doesn't because he sold it for something more trustworthy. All right? I'm saying that 95% of this shit is a scam, but also sometimes you can become a millionaire out of a scam as long as you leave early enough like Jimmy did. You know, that's what, look, if, if a YouTuber invests in a new coin and tells you to buy it, hey, he's trying to fuck you. So I think that this shit strikes me as Mr. Beast being a little bit young, a little bit naive, and having no idea the influence that he has, all right? The plant the trees thing was a great example of him using this influence for good. Creating a cryptocurrency, telling his nine-year-old fans to invest in it, watching it shoot up, selling everything, and then leaving your fans broke, not the best example of using your influence. But... I do really like him bullying the editor until he cried. So I'm saying that Mr. Beast is a multifaceted person. He has his positives, he has his negatives, and we have to take it with a grain of salt, okay? Um, I love this little paragraph. Let me find it. The, it was like the the start of the paragraph. It talks about how he he's probably going to be bigger than PewDiePie. He will be the biggest YouTuber uh, in the world, which is crazy. Um, and he is a fucking genius. Uh, but it talks about his his early start, uh, somewhere near the start here, where basically he just tried a bunch of different things uh, that worked, some things that didn't work. Uh, here we go. A perfect viral recipe. So... Uh, Blah, blah, blah. He tried a bunch of different gaming videos. He tried YouTube drama. He uploaded funny video compilations. He stole a video from Luke Kidgel, which again, I love. Uh, literally shot for shot, he stole Luke Kidgel's You Don't Own Me video, which, look, isn't the, 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 the highest example of Luke Kidgel's comedy, but still, I can't look... You know, back in the day, I almost did a video trashing Mr. Beast before he was, like, really huge because he stole, like, Luke's only viral video at the time. Like, the he literally, st I'm looking at it now. You don't own me. And I remember Mr. Beast stole this video shot for shot and then Luke messaged him or Mr. Beast messaged Luke. I can't remember who messaged first, but the point is Mr. Beast responded and Luke was like, hey, dude, you just stole my fucking video shot for shot. And then he said, yeah, I did. I was inspired by it. And look, I, sometimes I'm inspired by the amount of money that's in a bank, but that doesn't mean I can rock up with a fucking gun and take it, does it? No, it doesn't. That's very inspiring, and I think about it, but if I did it, I would go to jail. But for some reason, when it's content, people do this, right? So he did it shot for shot, and then uh, Luke goes, well, can you at least fucking credit me so that people know where the original person is? And then Mr. Beast goes, no worries, I'll credit you in the description. What video link do you want me to send through? What, t what video link do you want me to put in the description for people to click on? And uh, Luke Kidgel sent him a video that was a 20-minute expose about how Mr. Beast is a content thief made by somebody else, uh, thinking that Mr. Beast would click on this and go, ah, oh, fuck you, man, and then that would be it. But instead of even clicking on the link, Mr. Beast just copied and pasted it, put it straight in the description, and for about eight months, whenever anyone clicked that link in the description of the video that he stole from Luke, it took them to a video that was trashing Mr. Beast. Now... If that isn't evidence that this guy might not be the brightest tool in the shed when it comes to personal relations, I don't know what other evidence you want. So yes, the man's going to do some amazing things, but also yes, he might think that a, a, a good way to give feedback to an editor is to apply hot coals to his feet. That the, Both those things can be true. Someone can be a very philanthropic person and can also be exploiting the homeless. You know what I mean? Like, they're both true. 
So that's how he started, was just doing a bunch of other things. This is what the article says. Then, in 2018, he mastered the format that would make him a star. Stunt philanthropy. I love that term. Stunt philanthropy. And this is a, a genre that only exists in America. Like, if you really pay attention to YouTube culture, this type of stunt philanthropy only exists in America. Like, oh, I gave a homeless guy a haircut and then bought him a house. Or I gave $10,000 to this woman who was washing windows on the street. Or I hired a prostitute and paid her $150 instead of $30. Like, this type of stunt <laughs> Stunt philanthropy is really only something that works in America because of the giant, massive wealth divide in that fucking shithole country. Like, you can't do that in Australia. Like, if I if I had a, a million dollars and I walked up to a homeless guy and I gave him a grand, he'd be like, yeah, cool, dude. This is just double what Centrelink gives me. Like, I'm not that impressed. You know what I mean? If you gave $1,000 to a homeless woman in America, they would have a panic attack. You'd have to give it to her in 100 note increments to prevent her having a heart attack. It's the most shocking thing ever. The idea that a popular genre of American content creation is stunt philanthropy Anthropy is just another example of how broken that fucking country is. You can't do that. It's like the, something, if you come down with like, if your mother has diabetes and needs insulin in Australia, you just get insulin. You go to the doctor and you go, yeah, mum's fat. She won't stop eating ice cream. Can you give her medicine so she can do this until she's 70 instead of 50? And the doctor will be like, yeah, sure. Here's the needle. Go nuts. Right? You do that in America, the doctor will go, yeah, sure. Here's $150,000 of medical debt. Go and kill yourself. You can't do that. If your mum is dying of diabetes and needs insulin, you're actually more likely to get that money from David Dobrik accidentally driving through your Taco Bell on your shift when you're working the window, you know? Then you are the government helping you out or being able to afford it yourself. That's how broken the country is that they have a genre on YouTube called stunt philanthropy that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. Because America, Australia doesn't have those sub stories. You know, we have homeless people, but they're all doing all right for the most part. Obviously, I'm generalizing and I'm, and I'm talking like comparatively to American homeless people because I used to feel sorry for Australian homeless people. Then I went to America and I was like, oh, they're actually killing it. You know what I mean? Like um, Australian homeless people for our country, it's, it's terrible. But for America, I mean, you might as well be a king. You know what I mean? I saw, I, I drove through uh, in LA, the fucking shanty homeless towns that they have, and that is poor. I have never seen uh, poverty like that in my fucking life. I thought that shit only existed in documentaries and Africa. It's right there in America. It's crazy. Uh, and, and that's really what Mr. Beast has managed to leverage and exploit to his own benefit. So good on him. You know, like I saw, I, like, and that's just, the, that's the reason why I only have half a million subscribers and Mr. Beast has like, how many does he have? How many subscribers does the dude have? He's going to pass PewDiePie, doesn't that? That's like over a hundred million soon. 61 million. 61 million. And that's the difference between me and Mr. Beast. I have half a million dollars because when I see a homeless person, I might give them $2 or buy them McDonald's. Uh, Mr. Beast has 61 million subscribers because when he sees a homeless person, he sees opportunity. Not for the homeless person, for him. And that's the difference between the two of us. And that's why he's so successful and why I'm not. Uh, relatively speaking, anyway. Um, and that's that's just great. So, look, I think this... To me, everyone's saying that this, like, uh, article is a hit piece. I don't think that it is. Nothing in here, like, reads as objectively false. Uh, I think that the journalist... When when in, when it comes to the editor talking shit about him, I mean, that is true. The editor talking shit is true. Whether or not what he said is true is up for debate. But not including it in the article seems as disingenuous as or more disingenuous than 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 putting it in the article is less disingenuous i don't know what i'm fucking saying bro i can't speak english i don't see any issue with this article at all 
Uh, it mentions a bunch of positive things and then a bunch of negative things. I think all these people are just uh, angry, which is great. And I, and I love. Beast Philanthropy has over 3.2 million subscribers. Dear God, broken country. Like that's, that's how fucked America is where you can, you can have a whole YouTube channel <laughs> dedicated to just helping out people who are fucked. Like, in, a, in Australia, if I was Mr. Beast, if I had Mr. Beast money, like, I can dedicate ten, a hundred, fifty thousand dollars $150,000 to every video giving money to po poor people. In, in Melbourne, I would run out of people. You know what I mean? Like, I would just, I, I feel like if I had the amount of money that Mr. Beast does to dedicate to giving to just people who are fucked, I would run out of people. Whereas in America, it's the only country where there can at the same time be a guy who can have a multi-million dollar video budget to throw at people living in poverty. That's the only nation where both those people exist close enough for that channel to be real. What a country, man. That's great. So good on Mr. Beast. Uh, I hope for his next video, he, uh, he, he goes over to the editor's house and fucking burns it down. <laughs> oh, fuck. So let me, let me read it. I'll, I'll wrap up here. What is, what is the, the final thing that the editor said? Um, I think that's it actually. Oh, here we go. Nate Anderson, uh, moved to Greenville to work for Mr. Donaldson in March 2018, quit after a week over what he said were unreasonable demands. He said Mr. Donaldson was a perfectionist. Nothing ever worked for him. He always wanted it a certain way. <sighs> that's, a, that's a different editor. I mean, to me, that seems like no harm, no foul. You tried the job for a week. You didn't like it. Maybe it was too high pressure. I mean that it's it's working for Mr. Beast would be like working for like Fox News or like CNN or like something that would have be such a content high pressure turnaround machine where I feel like that's the role. Like I feel like working for Mr. Beast would be so much more difficult than than working for me. And you've heard how I treat my editor, you know? <laughs> like that's that's really that's how I I've said it before, but that's how I want to get exposed. I want to get exposed for being much nicer than I say that I am to my editors, you know? All these other people are like, oh, yeah, on camera he looks really nice, but behind the scenes he's terrible. I want the opposite. I want the video that Keelan makes when he gets like, like he doesn't even get fired. Like he gets, uh, he gets uh, a, a, a beautiful severance package and, and moves on after I retire. And then, and then, and then he comes out with a giant video going, Lewis Spears is actually a great bloke and it gets 3 million views. And I start to lose subscribers. People going, Oh, I was so disappointed, man. I thought you were a fucking asshole. You really betrayed me. That, you know, that's literally how people act in my personal life when they meet me is they thank me for being nice. Like I, like I just bestowed upon them. Like, I, you know, I'm an asshole to everyone, but I'm going to be nice to you. And, and that really should encourage me to change my tact and my tone and how I talk publicly. But, it, but I won't. So, you know, I would rather just surprise people with how nice I am because it really, you know, makes my life a lot easier. I don't have to be nice. I just have to be not a cunt. And people go, oh my God, this guy's, this guy's amazing. <laughs> it's like the opposite of all these other YouTubers. You meet David Dobrik, you're expecting a Tesla. No wonder the cunt's getting exposed. Exposed. Speaking of David Dobrik, that shit amuses me. You know, like who would have thought? Who would have thought the guy that can't make a video without 12 people laughing at every single thing he says might be a little bit fake. I never got around the David Dobrik stuff. I always thought it, it always struck me as fake. I can't, even the Mr. B stuff I, I feel is more genuine than that. And, and uh, I don't know, the, the David Dobrik stuff is just like, uh, I just couldn't imagine having that many friends, to be honest. How many fucking David Dobrik friends are there? There's like 10. Fuck that. I have like two friends and, and sometimes I get, I, I get sick of that. You know, there's, there's like a, a David Dobrik supporting cast is bigger than the fucking Simpsons. It's a bit ridiculous. And there's a lot more stereotypical race jokes in there too than the Simpsons, you know, like that. I don't know. Like you can't be a guy 
that spontaneously gives everyone or almost everyone in his life money and Teslas and all this other stuff and also have a genuine fucking connection with the people around you. There'd be no way to tell who's your friend and who's there just waiting for the keys to be shot out of a potato cannon and land in their hand. You know what I mean? Like that's, that's the life. So I feel like that David Dobrik shit's always been fake and now he's getting exposed for it. What was that thing, Keelan? I still can't tell if you were joking about that thing about David Dobrik being a cuck. Is that, were you fucking with me or is that real? Oh, I, I definitely wasn't fucking with you. Where is that? I saw it on Death Noodles. Oh, you saw it on Death Noodles and you're going, it's definitely not fake. All right, bro, and, pull it up. And H3 did a thing about it. Okay, pull up the cuck story and, and we'll talk about that later. Um, so the David Dobrik thing... <laughs> Welcome to Spearhead Sundays. Mr. Beast calls his editor a retard and David Dobrik's a cuck. Stay tuned for more news. <laughs> so the David Dobrik stuff, the, the Jeff Wittick shit, I find very entertaining because it's it's not very often you get to watch a vlogger's face get mashed in by industrial steel. You know, like that's really like how often have we looked at a guy going, hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to my daily vlog and not thought, man, I wonder what he would look like after getting hit by a crowbar. And and I really think this is a great little opportunity. Um, no, I do. I feel sorry for Jeff. I'm not wishing any any pain on anyone. That does suck. But what a fucking idiot this Dobrik guy is. I couldn't imagine having that much money and just willy-nilly attaching my friends to cranes to swing them around. Cranes, by the way, that a YouTuber is operating. A YouTuber should never, ever operate a crane unless they're streaming on Twitch and it's a simulator. Don't put a YouTuber in a fucking crane. It is a bad idea. So if you're unaware, which I'm sure you are, I'll do a quick recap. David Dobrik did some vlog where he's like swinging his friends around attached to a crane. That's all the, the catch up that you need. <laughs> he's swinging his friends. It's like he drove a crane into the ocean and swung his friends around way too far. Oh my God. Holy fuck. I just watched Jeff get absolutely ended. Jesus Christ. Does this cunt not know how momentum works? Don't stop it. Oh, my God. Dude, he's lucky he didn't fucking die. I've never seen the uncensored version of that. That is horrific. I don't know why the fuck you would agree to that. Oh, Jeff probably didn't get his Tesla yet, right? And that's the only way I could picture myself attaching my legs to a crane operated by a vlogger would be if I didn't have my Tesla yet. Because that Corinna Koff girl with the with the OnlyFans and the big tits, she decided to get off the crane. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. She got upset at David. And I've seen a video where he gives her a car. So so she's out. She's like, oh, David, you've already I've already got the car out of you. I've got my fucking OnlyFans money, so I don't need to get on the crane. Jeff, however, was waiting for his uh car and I would like to say uh, that I really respect what Jeff has done is he, what he did was he got critically injured by David Dobrik and instead of you know just posting a photo and trying to cancel David Dobrik he did the most LA YouTuber shit ever gone are the days where something bad happens to you and you film a vlog about it Jeff Wittick Decided to wait about six months. Is it six months? Or did I make that up? More than a year's time after the incident, waited until David Dobrik was already getting cancelled for other stuff and then decides to drop a four-part, four-hour documentary series about the incident where he almost died. That is how you cancel someone. Other women are trying to cancel Alex Williamson with an Instagram story. Boring. Make a documentary. Huh? Make a fucking documentary. That's what it takes these days. Jeff's out there trying to get on Netflix cancelling David Dobrik, and I respect it. What a hustle. He's going, if you want to see my fully mashed face, 
Support me on Patreon and you get the uncensored, gory pictures. That is content. Good on him. Thirty-six thousand dollars a month. Can you hit me with a chair so I can fucking make a doco? That would be great. How about this? Okay, obviously, right? I don't really want to be hit by a chair because I've got shows coming up. I've got it. I've got a tour coming up. I would say that in with our operation, if if we want to film shows out of you and me, I think you'd agree that you're probably more replaceable. Would you agree? Like, like I, I could get someone else to film the shows. I couldn't get someone else to do my shows, perform them. Yeah. So how about this? After the episode, I attach you to a crane, swing you around by the ankle into the crane itself or a building or a fence, right? Make it look like an accident. Your face fucked completely deformed, you're out of work for a year. During that time, I get you unpaid to make a documentary yeah. all about it, cancelling me, and then we split the Patreon money. 50-50. I get 51. 51% of the Patreon. 51 deal. I get 49% of the Patreon money. Great. How much does it cost to rent a crane? <laughs> <laughs> and that's how you do business guys that's negotiation tactics right there that you've seen crane rental how much does it cost to rent a crane a day, it's seven hundred and twelve hundred pounds so that's about like you know maximum four thousand dollars so by the end of the year we're actually coming out with a massive profit there even after we split it in half so that's good. What we so we'll split the earnings in half after we split your head in half, and that'll be good. And and if Keelan dies, I'll make the con. I'll make the documentary. Keep a hundred percent of the profits. Can I? Do you put the money up front for the crane? Uh, no. The the money for the crane will come out of your pay. <laughs> that's how we'll do it. Great. Anyway, apparently. According to one of the most trusted news sources on Twitter, Deaf Noodles, who I don't know who the fuck this Deaf Noodles guy is. I remember I did, I mentioned him in a video. At the time he was getting a lot of flack and then he defended himself by saying that he was a stand-up comedian running a satirical news site that takes the piss out of Keemstar and, and other shit like that. Who's that, who's that other, the other cunt in the flannel behind the tree? Who's that guy that was competing with Keemstar for a little bit? He fought in the boxing match. He looked like melted cheese. John. Who's that guy? I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> Someone in the comments has written it down. As soon as they, uh, they were probably a little bit confused, but as soon as they said in the boxing match, he looked like melted cheese. He fought fucking R Raka Raka. Who's the guy that rack? Who's that guy? Does he still do videos anymore? Remember when he was like bigger than Keemstar and then he just like couldn't handle it? Scarce. Scarce, that's right. Looked like melted cheese. <laughs> he said he was parroting like those Keemstar and Scarce accounts, but now I see this Deaf Noodles cunt everywhere on Twitter and he's just doing it. So I defended the guy in a video saying, oh, it's a parody. It's not a parody. The guy's like full on doing it. It's really weird. But anyway, this came from Deaf Noodles. So you know it's true. <clears throat> What's the Deaf Noodles tweet before we read these images? What has Deaf Noodles said about this? Not sure about this. I love how this guy starts all of his tweets. Not sure about this. <laughs> Like, dude, start a website, you fucking idiot. If you're going to do headlines in your tweets, just start up a website. Every single tweet this guy does starts off with a, with a clickbait sentence in all caps. Deaf noodles, every single one of them. Like these ones, instantly aged like milk. I mean, well, that's not how milk age, is it? If it aged instantly, we wouldn't put it in the fucking fridge at all. Call out. Note, today in cringe. That's good. That's how I want to start all of my sentences. Call out. Madison Beer speaks on getting online harassment. 
So exhausted of everything I do being labeled as cringe or embarrassing. Like I literally never want to leave my house again. All right. Don't. Enjoy your millions. All right. Death noodles. Not sure about this. David Dobrik's alleged former hookups come forward in anonymous posts submitted to former Call Her Daddy host Sophia Franklin. One alleges that David is... Can you scroll... <laughs> One, I'm sorry, we're learning out, we're learning this new thing. I'm yelling at Keelan, but it's we don't know how this works yet. One alleges that David is in a cockholding. Another alleges that David is allegedly bi. I mean, anyone who smiles with their tongue sticking in between their teeth loves a bit of penis. And that's a massive generalization, but I'm willing to bet my the house on it that it's true. Celeb hookup. Met David Dobrik on Tinder and he would booty call me whenever he was in New York City. Eventually, he revealed that he was into cuckolding and he would have he would have me have sex with his friends in front of him. I consented, but it was so crazy. Well, at least there's consent. That is good. Um, and I'm not surprised by this at all. Have you watched any David Dobrik videos? He doesn't do anything in any of them. They're not David Dobrik vlogs. He's filming his friends. He rarely does anything. He's just filming his friends do things that would probably be, be more exciting if you were to do them personally. It doesn't surprise me that this also translates into his sex life. Was there another one? More David Dobrik. Okay, my gay male friend was DM'd by David Dobrik from 2019 to 2020. David tried to hook up with him via DM, but my friend said they were never in the same city. David refused to fly him anywhere. So you tell me, is David bi or what? I mean, I got no opinion on that, and I don't really care if the dude's gay. What it does amuse me is him, like, fucking his friends or watching his friends fuck other people. That, what, a, what, a, what a hassle that would be schedule-wise. Although I suppose he always has a friend nearby. Hey, Jason Nash, can you fuck this girl for me? Is that the guy's name, Jason Nash? I need, an, I need a laptop charger. My laptop's going to die and then the whole episode will be done. Um, guys, while, I, while Killen plugs my laptop in, can you do that for me, please? Um, it's time to say a massive big welcome to... Welcome back to official sponsor of the show, Manscaped. Welcome back, Manscaped. Uh, incredible sponsor of the show. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping the Lawnmower 4.0. Incredible, guys. The Lawnmower 4.0 is out. Hey, you. Yeah, you. Got bush? You definitely do if you... <laughs> haven't tried the best products from our sponsor today, Manscaped. I use this shit all the time. Once every three weeks, shave my nuts. They look great. Uh, after using these life-changing products, you're going to want to join a ball sack beauty contest. I'm looking out for you too because I also have an exclusive 20% off discount. Use code SPEARS at manscaped.com. Do not read. Host talk about a funny grooming story or how they personally like the product. What's a funny grooming story? Uh, Michael Jackson. Uh, doesn't, that's a grooming story. Doesn't strike me as particularly funny. Uh, who else do we have? Uh, Macaulay Culkin had some stories, didn't he? Uh, but I don't think any of those were funny. So uh, I, I don't have any funny grooming stories. Sorry about that. Please use the fucking code. Because if I say this shit and the code doesn't work, Manscaped are gone. <laughs> Manscaped is dedicated to helping you level up your full body grooming game with their perfect package 3.0 kit. Dude, say what you want about this business. They've got the copy down, the perfect package. There must be some guy at this company whose job is just to come up with dick, cock and ball puns. And he's doing a great job. This is the best trimmer to help you trim up the hedges. The trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to the advanced skin safe technology pioneered by Manscaped. Uh, no, for real, guys, I, uh, I use this stuff. It's really, really great. They also have nose trimmers. Uh, the Manscaped lawnmower works on, on, on vaginas. I haven't tested it myself, but uh, there's a bunch of testimonies online from women uh, uh, that, uh, that I've seen. Not, I 
haven't I haven't seen their pussy, so I can't really attest to that myself, but I'm sure that it works for women. But it works great for men. I can say that for sure. I use this all the time. It is really good. Manscaped.com. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. And uh, yeah, they're really good. Support the show. Support the brands that support the show because uh, that's how I keep all of this spinning. And that's how I'm going to afford the crane to uh, smash Keelan's face in. Um, so thanks to Manscaped. Manscaped.com, use code SPEARS. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about here is uh, is some breaking news that I'm personally excited about. Bill Gates and Melinda Gates are getting divorced, uh, which, shocker. You know, I don't, like, people, how old is Bill Gates? I don't understand how, like, people that are in, like, that are billionaires, that are older, 65. I don't understand, like, if you're 65, like, why even get divorced? Why don't you just, like, move into different mansions and fuck who you want? I don't understand going through the hassle of the paperwork and the divorce and all that kind of stuff when you're, like, a billionaire. When, let's be honest, you're probably flying on Epstein's jet to islands to have orgies anyway. Why don't you just do that on separate jets at different dates, you know? I don't understand why you would get divorced. Why don't you just act like you're single and then say, yeah, we're not doing it anymore. I read a great conspiracy theory on Twitter saying that a reason why sometimes billionaires, Jeff Bezos included, will get divorced is, first of all, they will break up years and years and years before they officially get divorced in on paper, right? Because getting divorced means splitting up assets and doing all of that stuff. And that's something that just has to happen, especially if you have shares and run businesses and, and are like a billionaire, right? You have to figure that stuff out if you get divorced. It is just how it works. So a conspiracy theory I read, that's it. the idea is if I'm a billionaire, I have lots of stocks and property and all this kind of stuff, and I hate my wife. So instead of getting divorced when we both decide to break up, we both decide to break up and then we wait for the perfect market conditions to actually file the paperwork for the divorce. Perfect market conditions like, for example, post-pandemic, the stock market being at all-time highs and me not being able to sell my shares without tanking the price because I own so many that people could accuse me of insider trading or could, or maybe I have to provide notice or all of these other legal reasons that stop me from selling giant positions in businesses to make money without alerting the rest of the world and causing crashes or getting myself in legal ch- trouble. Instead, what I can do is file for divorce with my wife, whom I hate, and I broke up with many years ago, and then the courts will force me to liquidate most of my stock positions so we can turn our stocks and shares into cash and split that up. And I actually make more money doing that than I do by getting potentially in trouble for selling too much shit. So that's the conspiracy theory that maybe these guys have been single for a long time and they're just filing for divorce now when it's the perfect time to sell their shares and the most legal way to do that without getting in trouble is by getting a court to order them to do it. Now, I'm not saying that's what Bill Gates has done, but I am saying that's what I would do if I were him. But I love this little article about the Bill Gates divorce, which again was in the New York Times, but uh, I'm looking at a version of this that's uh, done by Fox News because I find that funny. Um, Let's see what they've omitted. I was reading about their relationship because I'm very interested in uh, in, uh, is in in basically starting a relationship with Melinda Gates. That's my ultimate goal here is, Melinda, if you're listening, I know you're a fan of the show. Uh, if you are listening, I am really, really, really into advanced MILFs with big bank accounts. Uh, and, and I think that really we could – start a beautiful relationship. I mean, I'm not going to need that much of your money and I can provide you with a lot of time. I'm young. I'm 27. I'm in my prime. I've been manscaping. I have a discount code Spears, 20% off and free shipping. Every single person that we bring into the relationship, I know you're into the into the strange orgies on the islands. Me, not so much the underage stuff, but uh, we can negotiate something to exclude me from those and include me in the other stuff. Uh, I, I think that I could be the perfect partner for you. All it would take is a significant portion of your personal wealth. Email me. I know you have my email. Let's talk. 
Um, but I love this little thing uh, that I discovered in this uh, years ago in like the 70s, literally. Uh, this person wrote an article about Bill Gates and uh, his relationship with his wife. Uh, sorry, this wasn't the 70s. This was like the 90s this was written. Uh, 1997 this was written. Um, and <laughs> apparently Bill Gates... Before he married Melinda, his now ex-wife, he negotiated into the contract with his wife or in, with his wife that once a year he could take a holiday with his ex-girlfriend. And that's just fucking sick. And the reason why, right? Let me find this thing. Gates' relationship, the tech honcho was allowed by his wife to spend time with an ex-girlfriend thanks to a built-in arrangement Bill had with Melinda prior to the now former pair exchanging nup nuptials in Hawaii in 1994. The negotiated consideration said that he and software entrepreneur and venture capitalist Ann Winblad would be able to jet off on an annual weekend getaways with each other to pick each other's brains and bask in the old times they shared while creating new memories of their own. Yeah, that's all they were doing, studying, going on a little study trip and talking about old times. I think that Bill Gates might be inserting his Microsoft in this woman in the holiday home. I think that's what they're really up to, right? And I love that the reason he said that he had to do this was because when he was dating this other girl, they would do this once a year, you know? Like imagine saying to your partner that you're currently with, going, look, I, I, I love you and you're the love of my life and I want to marry you, but I did have this tradition with my ex-girlfriend where... Once a month, I would have sex with her uh, when I was in a relationship with her. And I just really love you and I want to marry you. But I do want to keep the tradition that me and my ex had where once a month we would do anal. Uh, and, and I understand that might seem a little bit like an encroachment on the, the relationship that I have with you. But it is a tradition that I had with my ex. Once a month, we did anal. And I just want to say that, you know, if you can't let me do that once a month with my ex, I don't see a future for us. That's some shit that you can only negotiate into your marriage if you also have a billion dollars in your, ba <coughs> in your bank account. That's inspiring. Now I understand why so many people want to become billionaires. Because if you have a million, cool, you got a million dollars. What are you going to spend that on? A house? You can't even really get a house for that anymore in Australia. What are you going to buy? A car? Cool. That's like 10% of it gone. If you have a billion, yeah, you're allowed to have another girlfriend. But only on the holidays, you know? Imagine the first trillionaire. He's going to have 10 girlfriends. Something to think about. And on my path to become a billionaire, I, I would love to just pitch my Patreon, guys. If you'd like to support the show, join the Discord. Patreon is where we do it. We have a nice little uh, Discord community where everyone's posting memes about the show. Everyone's investing uh, in, in fucking Dogecoin. Don't worry, we've created a, a – we've quarantined it to an investing chat where all these fucking – Dickheads are rubbing in how much money they've made on Dogecoin after investing in it, inspired by me, and then not selling it when I decided to sell it. All these people are just rubbing it in. So, you know, there's a potential return on investment here. Or, you know, you could end up destitute like a lot of Mr. Beast fans. Look at me, criticizing Mr. Beast for inventing some shit coin, telling his fans to invest in it, when I am doing the same shit. I'm not. Don't. Don't invest money in Dogecoin. It is ridiculous. But you might make money. <laughs> so, yeah, Patreon is where to do it. And I'm going to continue on with uh, more episode after this. Um, and I've decided by reading all of the comments, both uh, supportive and negative, in the, the most recent episode about my AirPods, uh, a lot of people were, were very positive about the AirPods and uh, even more people were negative about my decision to buy AirPods. So I've decided to make the next Patreon goal. If we can, guys, if we can hit, if we can smash past the next Patreon goal, I, I promise uh, and I commit to buying a pair of AirPods Pro. Uh, so if we can hit, uh, look, 
$2,500 a month on my Patreon. I promise to you to buy AirPods Pro. That's the next Patreon goal, $2,500 a month. That's the new goal. Uh, please get behind me, and uh, if we can hit that, I'll get AirPods Pro. Sorry, I know a lot of people are mad about me buying AirPods. The only thing I can think of is uh, because I bought AirPods and not the AirPods Pro. So $2,500 a month, I will purchase some AirPods Pro. If we can hit $4,000 a month, I'll buy the AirPods Max. Uh, that'll be my next goal. How much are the AirPods? max how much are they eight hundred dollars fuck me so if we hit four thousand dollars a month on the patreon i will buy airpods max what color are we going with the black looks nice the pink i don't know about the pink i don't think i'm gonna show me the green show me the the mint oh that says money what about blue how does the blue look uh what is what about the white I'm going, I'll go with the black. I'll get a pair of black AirPods Max. How much? There's a $900. Oh, we can get engraving. What can we get engraved on them? Personalize your AirPods Max. You can, where do they get engraved? Along the, uh, the air cups. How many characters do we have? Um, yeah, okay. All right. If, if we can get $4,000 uh, in the Patreon, I'll, I'll spend $900 of that on uh airpods max and we'll engrave it uh and we'll and we'll just engrave it with patreon because that's that's uh maybe maybe go patreon and then three dollar signs does there enough characters for that yes there is so <laughs> so that'll be the the four thousand dollar goal if we get four thousand dollars on patreon i'll buy some airpods max and we'll engrave it with patreon and then three dollar signs actually no 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 change it to emojis i want i want the dollar i want the can you do that the the dollar sign emojis is that a thing Ah, oh, that's fucking bullshit. Well, whatever. It'll have to be dollar signs, guys. $6,000. I'll buy AirPods and plate them in gold. <laughs> um, all right, guys. Uh, that's going to be where we end it for uh, today's episode. Unless you uh, are a Patreon supporter, I'm going to continue on here for the uh, Spearhead Sunday supplement. Thank you very much for listening. There'll be more on Patreon. Uh, this episode was sponsored by Manscaped. Use code SPEARS for 20% off and free shipping. Uh, the Manscaped that I use every single single day um so not every day that would be ridiculous imagine if i was shaving my pubes every day i wouldn't i wouldn't have any skin left don't do that use it responsibly um also i need some more emails that's why i'm not doing miscellaneous bit at the end i got one good email if you want to uh, send an email to the show podcast at lewspears.com if you need some life advice if you have a question if you have a story anything you think would bring value to the show send it through the podcast at lewspears.com all right Thank you very much. I'm going to continue on for the Patreon episode. Uh, so check it out there if you want more ranting and shit. Um, and uh, yeah, I'll talk to you guys next Sunday. Until then, I'm Lewis Spears, and I hope you have a shit one.